Making the uh, district assembly common fund work for people with disabilities. And uh, send Ghana, you know, will always go and do their research and compile and find out how the system works. And they have done one into the 2% that are supposed to be allocated to people with disability. And they are here to educate us on what's happening. Are they getting it? Are they disbursing it? Are they supervising the manager? What is happening? So at least you and I know that our brothers who are maybe unfortunate, are they getting what they are due to get? Now, with me in the studio, and I'll start from my extreme left, is Adamu uh, Munkale. Munkaila. Adamu Munkaila, who's a program officer for the Upper West Region uh, of Send Ghana. Adamu, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And then my immediate left is Ni Anan Okai, who's an instructor. Uh, for the More Hope for Disabled Foundation. Ni, you're welcome. Thank you. Good. Uh, Ni, I'll start with you. Uh, more, more Hope uh, for More Hope for, for uh, Disabled Foundation. What, what do you do? Our main aim <coughs> is to get all dis people with disability mm -hmm. out of the streets. Okay. So we gather them, we trade them, and after training, we empower them to work on their own. Okay, so that's what you do. So, so what, you just literally have to go out in town and just identify people and invite them or how? Those who we identify to be with disability, mm -hmm. we just talk to them. If you are interested, you can. So we form an organization and the organization is more hope for the people okay. with disabilities. And the name of the organization is More Hope for Disabled Foundation. Foundation. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. So uh, you go out on a Monday, you see a couple of people, maybe one, one arm has been amputated, you invite them. So what do you, you then you ask, do you want to be a carpenter? Do you want to be a shoemaker? Do you want to be a driver? Do you then ask the person what they want and then try and steer them? Or you have a set program which you... We, we invite them to... When we see people with such disabilities, we invite them to our meeting place. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. To our office. So we ask you a type of uh, training you like. We have shoe makers, dress makers, mm -hmm. and computer training. Okay. Uh -huh. And so then they will choose which way yes, they want to go. Yes. Okay. That's that's good. Now I'll go to Adam. Adam, wanna. Send Ghana, they, they are my friends. You know, anytime you come up with a report, I'm very inquisitive with what report you come up with. And this time you're looking into the uh, District Assembly Common Fund, yes. and particularly the 2% which is allocated for people with uh, disabilities. First of all, is the 2% enough, though? I mean, with your research? Well, it's not enough. Looking at the uh, number of people involved here, mm -hmm. even though we don't have database on PWDs, Mm -hmm. But roughly they are about 5% of the total population. So if you are just giving them 2%, that is woefully inadequate. Just of the, uh, this is yes, a kind yes. of fund, yeah? There are, I mean, there are a lot of uh, speculation about the increase. Some are saying they have increased it to 3%, others are saying 4%, but in actual fact, it's still 2%. Wow. There hasn't been any increment. What, what, what's been our progress as a country towards the implementation of Article 41, which is obviously the Disabled Act. Yeah. Well, the implementation actually was delayed in implementing this policy. And now, using the Disassembly Common Fund, for instance, which is supposed to bring them up, it was actually introduced in 2007. But in actual fact, if you look in 2007, 2008, 2009, persons with disability were not able to even assess the Common Fund. One of the uh, provision in the guideline is for the assemblies to open bank accounts, mm -hmm. which the common fund will be transferred from common fund administrator into the account for persons with disabilities in the district. But our research that was actually conducted in 2010 clearly indicated that about 70% of the assembly as of 2000 not open the accounts. 
and the disability farm management committee they are supposed to manage the farm about the same number has also not formed the disability committee at the district level so it became very difficult for pwds to assess the farm in spite of the fact that these accounts were not open and the farm management committees were not in place this assembly go ahead and spent that money we don't know who are the beneficiaries so really we have serious problems with the uh, this assembly common fund for persons with disability yeah. okay let me just explain to viewers that pwd here is people uh, with so, disability and yeah. not public work department but <laughs> people with disability. Yeah. Uh, but then I'll come to uh, Ni here, because Ni, you are interacting with them. Are most, uh, the people you, are they aware that there's this fund that they can access? Yes. Most of the people know that there's a fund for people with disabilities, mm -hmm. but yet we didn't get it. We have been chasing it, chasing it, and up to now. We are having, in with more hope, we are having about 70 people as our membership. But as I'm talking to you right now, only 11 people have got access to the common fund. Let, let, let me go back to Adamu. Adamu, the, you see, I, I hear the fund is not set up that you just walk into the office or oh, give me money to put in my pocket. No. It has to be towards like schooling or business or yeah. something. And even that is still proving a challenge or? Yeah, especially those who are students. For instance, we know the problems that uh, uh, the common fund in terms of transfer, delay in transfer mm -hmm. sometimes. They just received the third quarter of 2013. So you can imagine the oh. whole of this year, no nothing has actually. Yes. The fund itself has got a challenge. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. So sometimes it takes a lot of time, especially those who have to pay their school fees on mm -hmm. timely basis, for them to even get their school fees to pay. Mm -hmm. So it's really posing a lot of challenge, uh, all because the common fund. It's first of all, it's not enough. Secondly, it takes years. Or sometimes, like I said, they just received the uh, third quarter just last month 2013 2013 so they have so the last quarter plus this first and second quarter wow. and yet persons with disability need this money to finance their education health care and those who are into income generating activities they need something to start business with and even those who have gotten like he's saying the money is so small that it ends up in consumption for instance if i want something to start a business with and I'm talking about a range of maybe 50, uh, 3,000 and you just give me 25% of that, you know definitely they don't have money anywhere to support it. That money is not going to be invested but that person is going to use that money as mm -hmm. a consumption expenditure, he's just going to consume the money and that is the main challenge that some of the persons with disabilities are facing with the, even those who have received the fund. So, uh, number one, so we have uh, the fund, you know, itself delaying, yes. the fund being too small. small. Uh, what are some of the other challenges? I mean, is the education gone down well with people with disabilities? What are some of the other challenges? Or the yeah. Other setbacks? yeah, he talks about education. Yes, mm -hmm. especially those who are members of the Ghana Federation of Persons with Disabilities. They, to some extent, have the information. But how about those who are not members? Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is. They don't know much about the fund, and the Ghana, uh, the National Council for Persons with Disability, they are supposed to educate these people to understand, to even know that there is a fund somewhere that they can access to support them. But they are not everywhere in the country. They are supposed to be a representative in each district. Mm -hmm. But our survey clearly indicate that about 47 percent of districts do not have that rep who is supposed to give this information to these people. So that is another challenge that we need to deal with. Let, let me, uh, uh, do you have to go like in a group, uh, like you have to form a coalition to go and get the money, or you can go individually and say, listen, you know, I'm, me, I'm, I'm here and I need my 2% share of the fund. We go to the assembly as individuals. As individuals. as individuals. You don't go as a group. Yes. 
but but let me. Do, yeah. you, have, do you have to go as a group? Yeah, or it's, it's group? open to both individuals or a group. Or a group. Okay. So as a person, even with those disability, those in the group have to apply individually. They don't have to apply in a group form. I see. I see. I see. So. No, you see, you can apply as an individual, but if a group wants to also undertake an activity, you can also apply as a group, and sometimes money is given for that. Yeah. Uh, maybe this may be too technical, but let me find out. But, but you see, are, are we not getting uh, people with disability? It's like you, you wait till he or she is about 18, 16, 21, and then you try and say, oh, come and let me see if you want to be a uh, tailor or IT. But it's like when they are three, four years old, when you can really train them to have that ambition, th there isn't enough uh, logistics capturing them uh, you know, at that age. So that you know, when they are 20 and you come, you can tell you, yes, I want to be this or I want to be that. Yeah, like you just said, just last uh, census that we had a database, I mean, roughly we had... Uh, the population f uh, figures capturing persons with disability. Mm -hmm. Until then, we didn't even know how many people, persons with disability we even have in the country. So it's very difficult, actually, and then more especially in the villages where the people still hide pe these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want them to come out. So it's very difficult. We need to actually increase the education. If not, <laughs> in future, I don't know what will happen to persons with disability. People still hide persons with disability in their rooms. And that is a very serious problem that, as a nation, we need to address. If you go to the, you know, the offices, what are some of the excuses that they will tell you, you know, what, what are the excuses you're getting? Some of the excuses were that the, the fund have not been released. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, they will tell you, money because we apply individually and uh, maybe you've applied for something equipment mm -hmm. to work with they will tell you they, they, they haven't get the exact equipment that you've required i see mm -hmm. i see i mean it's, it's such a challenge but it's one of those things where you know it's all over the news to say oh the common fund has income. Yeah. And you go and then truly they tell you the common fund has yeah, income. income. So, I mean, how do you deal with such Yeah, stuff? per the guidelines, if they receive money in the accounts, the assembly is supposed to notify the farm management committee chair that oh, this amount has been transferred into the persons with disability accounts. But that is not happening. Sometimes they have to go there and ask them. And even then, it becomes a problem. Why? Because the assemblies themselves borrow money from the, common, uh, the uh, disability account, and that is not allowed. But this is the situation. Sometimes, even though it's just 2%, the uh, account is richer than the assembly, mm -hmm. and they tend to do a lot of borrowing. Why? Because the signatories to the account is still the coordinating director and the district finance officer. So it's just a matter of agreeing that, oh, let's borrow this uh, amount without even consulting the farm management committee. The assembly can easily go in and borrow money. And our research indicated clearly that 60% of assemblies borrow money so that even if the money is there, they have used that money for something else. So instead of telling them the Which truth... Which may not benefit exactly. or go directly... Yeah. Instead of telling the, them the truth, they will tell, oh, money has not been transferred into your accounts. And the uh, National Council for Persons with Disabilities, they are supposed to give information to the disability organization. But here is the case, they don't also have representatives in all their districts. Do you even know what's going on? So that is the point. It's, it's, it's a huge challenge, but yeah. uh, if I broaden it a bit, uh, why, why aren't we able to get out of this stigma and uh, stereotyping? Why, why can't we get out? I mean, it's 2014. Uh, there's Twitter, Facebook, Internet. I mean, there's, isn't there enough information? What more? I mean, would we need to get out of this, uh, you know, hide them because, you know, he, he or she has got a limp, so let's hide it. Yeah, I think the information has not gotten down to those who really need the information. We just make a lot of noise. 
but deep down there, people who need that information are not getting it. Who is supposed to do it? Is it the National Council for Persons with Disability? Is it the disability organization themselves? And if it's the organization, they are ill-equipped and they cannot do it. You see, the 2% allow them to use part of it mm -hmm. to sensitize their members, mm -hmm. but they are not getting it. So even though we think that the information is out there, the right people who are supposed to have that information, they are not getting it. The, you, you also interact with people with disability, close contact. What, 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 what is it that they want? Because sometimes you, know, you, you sit at one side of the table and assume that, oh, I, this is what you may want. But sometimes you know, speaking to them, they know, you know what they want. And you know, what are some of the things that they want? Those who have been trained mm -hmm. in different phases apply for different equipments. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say we all need a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot say we all need uh, a grinding machine. Uh -huh. Some people apply for uh, something like deep freezers. People apply for sewing machines. So who were training? Mm -hmm. They apply for sewing machines. Those who were learning leather works apply for industrial leather machines. And those who apply for those machines, only about three people have been equipped. All the rest, now, nah. nothing has done to. Yeah, yes. just to add uh, to what he's saying. Before you apply, you have it's more or less a form of proposal. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. This is how much it will cost me. Mm -hmm. And it's sent to the fund management committee. They have to look at it and think, uh, look at the proposal. And now, based on that, they can now advance some money. Into it. But what he's saying is that, for instance, somebody applied for a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And now the fund that they receive is so small, considering the number of people who apply at any point in time. Mm -hmm. In some districts, what they do is that they just give flat rate to everybody. If it's, 100, it's 100 Ghana cities, no matter what is in your proposal, you are all giving 100 cities. So that you also, in this case, if you give somebody who wants a sewing machine, which costs around 200 or 300 Ghana, and you just give him 100 Ghana, what happens? The person doesn't have money to add whatever he wants. So he end up using it as a gift, something that he has. To. So that is the main issue because the farm management committee are supposed to do a lot of vetting. They are supposed to do a lot of digging about the person who have just applied for the farms, but they are not doing it. They just sit down and just look at it. Oh, depending on how much is available, but this money will keep on coming. So it's not something that you can say that, okay, we have 20 of them, we can't satisfy, you can satisfy even if it's five of them. And you know that you give them enough money to be able to start something with. It makes sense to satisfy the five people. Don't spread it thinly mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, they can't use it for anything. Mm -hmm. They only consume it and next uh, uh, year, they are applying, applying for the same thing. thing. I'm going to take a break here and then when we come back, we'll find out should there be a lawyer, you know, to front uh, this and test the law and see if it works? And also there's a new District Assembly Common Fund report which is coming out. What is in there? Stay tuned. Making the uh, District Assembly Common Fund work for people with disability. And that's the issue we are talking here about today. But one word, just before one break, I just want to... Uh, and but I want to say, can we, can we test the law? Because it's, it's, it's statutory, isn't it? It's not like a, a handout or give it to me when you have it. it it's, it's a law. Yes. I mean, can, can we test the law? We can. Why not? But it's going to be very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. I don't know how, but I think it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> we tried. Uh, well, we used charge mm -hmm. When... A persons with disability who have gone through the process and acquired a license mm -hmm. to use a motorbike and a license officer just because he had a problem with him decided to confiscate the license we tried to dialogue with him it didn't work we tried using shirak up to now it's over a year now 
they are still on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's over a year now. <laughs> so it's going, really going to be very difficult. Yeah. I think we should rather try to dialogue with the assemblies to see the need to release these funds for persons with disability. I think that should be the right way to go. Lee, you were talking about some of your, your, your challenges. You know, and I'd like to hear with, in terms of accessing money. As if you apply, uh, you don't get it, and there are you know, some unscrupulous people or some dodgy people getting it. And the reason why I'm saying so is since we've got the organization and we are all trying to get people with disabilities out of the streets, it is better the assembly work with the organizations in terms of monitoring those people who have got the money. The organization can monitor well more than the assembly because the assembly members or the this assembly, they don't have time for that monitoring. But if those within the organizations were accept, and we members of the organization, we monitor them and see whether they are doing the right thing or not. But if the money were given to individuals on the streets, who monitor them? Who know that they are using the money for the right thing they have applied for? So it's better that these assemblies work with the so-called organizations so that we members of the organization can monitor our people. We see what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Because most of them were trained by the organizations. So it's better the money uh, or the requirements were channeled through the organizations. But we don't know. Sometimes you go and they will tell you uh, they've got some individuals on the streets whereby they take care of them. And it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Mm. Yeah, sometimes. just to add to what he said, yeah. there's a district where a driver applied for the farm and it was approved, given to him. It's not a PWD. He <laughs> went again the second time and he was caught. So this is because when you apply, you apply directly to the farm management committee. But the social welfare, if they are up and doing, they are in charge of all PWDs in the districts. So they should be able to tell the committee that this is not a PWD. They should have a database of all PWDs in the district. Mm -hmm. But this is not happening. Because of that, people are taking advantage of the situation. Even the PWDs themselves, especially the RFs in the farm management committee, there are districts where you go around collecting names, writing applications for persons with disabilities. Once the money is approved, he takes his percentage and gives the rest to them. This is because monitoring of the fund, as he indicated, is very, very poor. That is an area where the farm management committee should be up and doing. But because they are not, if you go into the research, that, the report that we are about to I was to going to ask, so yeah. if you can add that for it's me. It's only 20% of uh, farm management committee who normally monitor beneficiary to see what they are using the money that they applied for, what they are using it for. 20%. Just 20%. And even that is once in a year. So it's serious. We need to look at the monitoring I'll aspect. Help you. I'll, so give, I'll give you let some me typical example. Mm -hmm. Somebody applied at uh, Mamobi mm -hmm. and he was given 200 Ghana. Later he came to Teshi to register with More Hope for Disabled Foundation. Upon investigation, we found out that he's, uh, he has applied for the fund at Ma uh, Mamubi. So we, we sack him. He said since he is there, he should go there and apply there. But that is his habit. Moving from organization to organization. Yes, from one That's place why to you another. There should be like a database to exactly. Yes. So that we know that this number of PWDs, they are in other districts. When you are actually going for the, if you are applying, you have to attach an ID card. And after they've gone through the process and approve, and you are going to pick your check, you have to also go with the ID card so that it becomes easier to identify the person. In other districts, what they are doing is that whether you are a member or not, 
apply through the PWD organization. So they will do the background checks before the forms are sent to the farm management committee mm -hmm. to go through. And I think that is the way we should go. Like he's saying, they know their members and they know who is not a member of their organization. But, but the guidelines allow members and members, once it's to a PWD, to access right. the farm. So that is the challenge. Hmm. That is also the challenge there. So the, you see, the thing is, so I can move from Tamale, board a bus, come to Kumasi or somewhere and say, look, let me find, let me apply, let yeah. me apply here. Yes. In, in, in that case, what should you do? Should, should it be a centralized system where, you know, there's a national database where as soon as you apply, it's like, look, you've assessed the fund two days ago in Tamale, you cannot come and apply here again. How, how else are you going to do it? Yeah, like I said, all the PWD know themselves. And the social welfare is supposed to have a database. Oh, but they, they, the will know the, they will know themselves in a particular area. Yes. So if, let's say, I live in, uh, you know, uh, Upper West Region, yes. do you know me there? Yes. If I hop on a VIP bus and manage to get to Ashoba or yeah. Teshi, yeah. that's it. Nobody knows me again. Yes, yes. It's true. It's very difficult to. But like I said, if the farm management committee were up and doing, doing a lot of assessment of applicants mm -hmm. they will be able to unearth some of these things because mm -hmm. you need a lot of things to qualify you as a resident of a particular district your address at least even trying to find out around you know we have things would have been very easy if our area councils were working effectively mm -hmm. because they can collect data on pwd within an area council so if somebody comes and it's not from that area. You can even ask him which area council is he coming from. Mm -hmm. And is the member, the, the, the chairperson aware of him? Simple question will be able to, we will be able to unearth some of these who go around the street taking the same amount from the same pot. I see. Yeah. So the, 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 what's the objective of the report coming up? Yeah, like I said, our main objective was to look at how key stakeholders are following the guidelines for the implementation of the 2% share of the Israel Sami Common Fund. We are looking at the farm management committees. We are looking at the National Council for Persons with Disability. We are also looking at the district assemblies themselves. Yeah. There's even clear, like he was even saying, if you take the guidelines, for instance, he said the farm management should approve they should vet and approve but that is not what is happening on the ground why because the assembly believe that per the local government laws the dc is the final approval of all transactions so if you are saying that the fund management committee should approve then what are you saying so they are not allowing so what the fund management committee is now doing is more or less they vet the forms and propose that the DC will sit back and look at it and approve. So even the guidelines itself, we need to take a second look at the guidelines. Okay. But it's, 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 a, it's like a, a leaking tap there, you know, yeah. there's, there's a source of, you know, revenue really being uh, vanished. Yeah. Why, why isn't there no any agency to close it? <laughs> Well, probably it's not your question, no problem. Yeah, but, but what I think that uh, what is happening, people are not aware of what is happening. And I think so. this report will clearly come out and uh, once people start reading, they will take action. For instance, Minister of Local Government sent a circular to all assemblies to stop borrowing from that particular account. Mm -hmm. But here is the case, they are still borrowing and then if you go, about 60% of assemblies still borrow money from these uh, accounts. What can we do to stop the assemblies from borrowing money? Mm -hmm. It's simple. Just add one signatory from the PWD Association or National Council for Persons with Disability. When it happens like that, there's no way the coordinating director and the finance officer alone can withdraw money from the account. 
you have you need an insider to deal with exactly very good i'm going to take another break here and then when we come back i just want to find out where the research was done how many people you know they, they what, what was the sample size oh. stay tuned we're coming just i just wanted to find out uh you know where the research was conducted and i'm sure adamu will help me with that you know, you know because the uh, the situation is quite damning mm -hmm. In four regions, okay. the three northern, re the re three regions of the north, mm -hmm. and Greater Accra region. Why? Because we have active sense presence in these four districts, mm -hmm. four regions. And why? Because of poverty. Mm -hmm. When you also talk about poverty, in the three northern regions, mm -hmm. we are also looking at urban poverty. That's why we included Greater Accra region. Three districts were selected in each region for instance in the greater accra we selected three regions based on saint Ghana's own assessment of districts mm -hmm. in terms of the management of the two percent share of the district we have the best region the west and the in between mm -hmm. so in upper west greater accra and then upper east we selected three each but northern region because of the size we double the figure mm -hmm. to six so you know uh, 15 districts were actually involved in these studies. And the people we interview include the funk management committees, the district assemblies themselves, Ghana Association of Persons with Disability, REFs, and some beneficiaries as well as non beneficiaries of the uh, fund. I mean, the, the, uh, the managers of this fund or the the yeah. guys who work in the uh, district, I mean, why are they depending, you know, why are they borrowing from this, this fund instead of using it for what it's meant for? <laughs> like I said, sometimes the fund, the account is more richer than the whole assembly, and they have to fall on that. I talked to a coordinating director, why that? And he told me, Munkela, if the common fund comes today, tomorrow, get to the assembly, everything is finished. So it's always left with the PWD share lying down there because they are not even aware that the money is there. And per the guidelines, they are supposed to meet every quarter, once in every quarter, to approve. So even if the thing comes earlier, at least they are supposed to meet once. Mm -hmm. So the money will still be lying down there. If they are not able to, their meeting, spend everything, it seems that you still have some money in the accounts. And when there is an emergency, assembly will now fall on that and then just pick, borrow the money. And let me give you a clear example. Mm -hmm. A committee sat and they approved checks, uh, applications. Checks were issued <coughs> only for the PWDs to get to the bank and there's no money in the accounts. <laughs> the question is, who used that money? And more to the point, the assembly, the coordinating director, and the DFO, they are signatory. So when they were signing the checks, didn't they know that there's no money in their accounts? And the PWD, look at the struggle that sometimes they're blind. They need somebody to even accompany them. Mm -hmm. Gets to the bank only to find out that there's no money and they have to wait. So that is the situation. Mm -hmm. I think they have interest. And that is the more reason why they are not giving the, PW, uh, the farm management official notice. If, because common fund administrator will send them letters and you are supposed to give the same letters to the chairman of the fund management committee so that you know that this is the amount of money mm -hmm. in our accounts. Therefore, this is the number of checks that we can approve. But that is not done. And that is the main reason. Just because the assembly borrow, they don't want the PWD to use all the money in case of emergency, mm -hmm. they will not have something to lay hands on. But I mean, uh, I don't, can the assembly borrowed to pay back you know maybe they're using it for some business and then pay back or are they borrowed to just take the money and they then borrowed that's it? well one director told me that they pay back but most of the time they don't they don't pay back what's the general feeling amongst your members because mm, of what is happening they don't have trust most of them don't have trust in the assemblies in the district assemblies because We'll be hearing on radio, television that so so and so is being done to the PWDs. 
but we don't have it on the ground. Mm. So most people don't have trust in them. No, no, the system, no, no, no confidence in, in, in the system. Yes. You know, I mean, what are some of the other hitches that the, uh, the study has identified? Yeah, in terms of, I mean, even though we believe that there are challenges, but some assemblies are doing very well in terms of the implementation of the guidelines. Mm -hmm. For instance, in the area of opening of bank accounts, almost 100% of all the districts have accounts and then district fund management committees in place. And they have the same, no, the membership of the, you know, the guideline comes clear, uh, it comes out with uh, people who are supposed to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. So you can't just appoint yourself to be on that committee, no, it's specific. The chairperson of uh, social subcommittee, social welfare, PWD rep, and uh, National Council for Persons with Disability rep, and they can co-opt somebody. For instance, if we are dealing with educational issues, then we should have somebody with the knowledge in education to help us vet those applications. Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with health, you need to co-opt somebody with that kind of expertise. And in most cases, they have this uh, MBSSI rep to help in those who want to undertake some income generating activities. What, what's MBSSI? National Board for Small Scale. Okay, industry. okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, these members are there. But all that they know is that we have to vet and approve. And that's what they are doing. But the other issue is monitoring. Mm -hmm. and supervision of the usage of the fund. Mm -hmm. And like I said, most of the PWDs who apply to undertake income generating activity end up using the money for something else. Wow. Just because the farm management committee are not monitoring and supervising what they are using it for. Also because what you have given to that person is not enough for the person to undertake that business that he wants to take. So what do you expect him to do? What we should understand is that the common fund is there for us all. If you can satisfy 10 of them in a quarter, so that whatever they get can take them out of poverty, can give them something to do, it's far, far better than 700 at the end of the day, they use it as consumption. That is what the fund management committee should understand. And like I said, in other districts that they are doing well, I can always mention Sisala West, where you go to, if you try to find out those who have been given, it's enough for them to start something. Mm -hmm. You go there and you see that, yes, they are using the money for their intended purpose, all because they do a lot of assessment and give them what is due them. In some cases, people apply for 200, they are given 500, just because after going through the application, they realize that the 200 is too small. So why not increase it so that the person can actually use it for what he wants to use that money for? Mm -hmm. But in other districts, it's not like that. The, the, the assembly will even organize a forum and bring journalists just to tell them that they are doing the right thing and they will just be giving them a check of 100 Ghana, 100 Ghana, 100 Ghana. What are they going to use it for? Their needs are not the same. Why do we give them flat rates? So these are the questions that we need to ask the assemblies. And, and uh, where, where are you launching the report? The report is tomorrow at uh, let's check the name. at uh, Stepris inside CRS. Okay. Behind Golden Tulu Hotel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what time? I think it's ten o'clock. In the, in the morning? Yes. Okay. And uh, anything that we expect? Are there any things do we expect uh, as we've come there tomorrow? Or yeah. We'll have a whole presentation of the findings mm -hmm. for people to also ask questions. It's basically a media event. Okay. Which means that we are inviting a lot of journalists mm -hmm. and then some key stakeholders to also be part of the lunch. And 
as organization, if we launch a, or we conduct a research and the report is launched, we just don't end it there. We do what we call interface meetings. So we're going to organize interface meetings in all the districts and we'll present the report to the assembly and the key stakeholders there. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we'll look at the findings and together see how best we can deal with some of the issues identified by the report. And then we'll continue monitoring the commitment that the assemblies and the key stakeholders will make. So that at the end of the day, it just don't remain as a, a research report, but something that, I mean, we can all benefit and be proud of. The, uh, obviously, I'm sure, uh, I, 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 are you representing tomorrow with your yes, members? Yes, you are. We will be representing. So, I mean, this may be pleasing to you because now, you know, it's not hearsay, hearsay. This is, you know, paper evidence that, listen, this is what is going wrong. So we will be there. I myself will be there. Will be there. Well, that's good. And, uh, you know, some of your final words to yeah. the state as to what we should do and what we shouldn't do? Yeah, I think we all have a responsibility. To p we all have a role to play here. Mm -hmm. The PWD themselves, the assemblies, and the farm management committee, and the civil society organization as a whole. For instance, if our PWDs are taking the fund and they are misapplying it, then it doesn't actually speak well of them. At the end of the day, you pick, you say you want to do this thing, you use the money for something else. Assembly should also know very well that when we, if we actually want to develop our people, we should include our persons with disability in the planning and implementation of policies at the district level. What is wrong if a district assembly decides to give a quota of uh, the 30% government appointees at least give five or four uh, ten percent of this quota to persons with disability to also be part of the assembly and contribute meaningfully to the development of the districts and for us as civil society organization we need to increase our sensitization so that pwds will not be kept in their room bring them out and try to dialogue with the government bring their needs and see how best we can deal with this needs so that at the end of the day we we'll all benefit gentlemen thank you very very much it's been an education and uh you know tomorrow if you're not doing anything uh well make some time go to step three inside csir behind golden tulip and listen to the full report and maybe you can even uh, ask your questions or make suggestions as to which is the way forward uh because if five to ten percent uh, of the citizens in the country are people with disability. And any country that ignores that amount of people in its country, it's not a serious country. So we should do something better. However, tomorrow, as you know, it's Friday and it's personality profile. We have one big guest for you, Nana Kunedu Ajima Rollins herself, talking to us on personality profile. It's amazing. Very casual interview, not in political. Nothing hard, very light, but extremely interesting. So tomorrow at 9 p.m., don't miss Personality Profile with Nana Kunedu Ajima Rollins. As I always say, thank you, and we'll be back to do it all over again.